All right, Wayne Bettis here, the founder of the Off The Tools podcast. I just want to introduce you to our brand new sponsor, directplumbingsupplies.com. It is founded by a former tradesman who has set up his own plumbing and heating merchants. He has an online shop, which is obviously at directplumbingsupplies.com, and he delivers across the UK. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the show. Hello, Wayne Bettis here, and in yet another installment of the Trade Growth Summit, I have the absolute pleasure of introducing Adam Chapman, who is the Director of Veto Energy and Director of Heat Geek. Adam, welcome to the Trade Growth Summit. Thank you very much for having me on. Um, amazing course. I'm from uh, Aldershot uh, originally, so uh, Aldershot being the home of the British Army, so, um, you know, the course close to, close to home. Oh, excellent. Yeah, like obviously everyone here, yeah, we're all trying to raise money for Help for Heroes, you know, supporting our our veterans and, and wounded soldiers ac- across the UK. So it's a great cause and I am absolutely delighted to have you. You know, we've sort of known each other online for a few years now, so it's going to be a great yep. discussion. I'm really looking forward to it. But for those that, that don't know who Adam Chapman is, can you just give us a little sort of intro into maybe a bit of your past and, and, and yep. what you've been up to? Right. OK. Um, I, I think a lot of people say that they um, they fell into this trade. Uh, I wasn't one of those people, actually. Uh, I specifically chose to, to go into it. Uh, I, I remember traveling around America and, and staying in hostels and things like that and seeing tradesmen go into a, a, a city, uh, go and work for a few days, make a shit ton of cash and then fly off to another country and then work in their city. And I was like, I want a piece of that action. So uh, I got back home uh, and rolled on uh, it, the first course. I did it was a fast track course to get me on the thing. And then I, uh, I managed to get a, a, a job in a commercial uh, installation firm uh, and then put, got put through my NVQ level three uh, day release uh, and obviously gas safe and stuff. Uh, so I probably did that. I was, it was before I was 21. I was probably 20 when I, when I did that. Um, and um, yeah, since then, I set up uh, my, my own personal company, Chapman Plumbing, that was at the time, uh, which I ran with my partner, because for me, I, I had to get someone in immediately. As soon as I went out on my own, I was going home to send off invoices and then going out to a job and then going home to write up an email. And it didn't make sense. So I, I just within a two or three months, I, I got my, my partner involved because uh, that for me was just inefficient. I went to be out earning money continuously, not answering the phone. Uh, so that was an important step for me immediately. And the, our little team, my, my partner's very uh, business astute, um, uh, our little team ran really well for 10 years. And then uh, then we got the diagnosis of having twins. And I thought, Joe can't obviously work, you know, work for me and, and, and uh, take care of twins. So um, at, at that point, I joined up with uh, Patrick Wheeler, who was basically running, he was, his wife was pregnant as well, um, coincidentally, and, and essentially running the same company as mine uh, uh, in a parallel fashion, just up the road in um, uh, Twickenham. So, we, you know, we were chatting. So we both have kids. Yeah, I can't get rid of Joe, but, I, you know, I have to lose half my work. And, yeah, we decided to join together. That was three years ago now. And since then, so when we joined together, we called that business Vito Energy. Vito Energy is now the UK's number one hydrogen fuel cell installer. Um, uh, we, we do, um, if, well, we've got a showroom here, which I could probably uh, give you a little sort of tour of. We've got a hydrogen fuel cell there. We've got, um, there's all sorts of stuff here at the moment. Um, heat pumps outside there. We've got batteries over there in and working, solar thermal. We've got all sorts. Well, everything. We literally have everything here. And so would, you, would you would you say then that it's sort of you're pioneering this renewables sort of surge in the UK then by the sounds of it? Uh, uh, I'd say that's a flattering way of putting it, but... Yeah, if you want. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I like I follow I followed you, you know, for, for yeah. years. And it's been really great to see you when you took on that showroom and 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 seeing yeah, yeah, how yeah. it's come together and, and being the UK's number one hydrogen cell, you know, that that's that's some achievement, isn't it? You know, and yeah, I'm I'm proud. <laughs> that, is, that is really, really cool. And um Thanks. I wanna just before you move on, right? I'm gonna yeah. I just wanna come back to you mentioned you did a fast track course, right? Which yeah. That was a surprise to me. Okay. Yeah. My presumption was that you did like an old school apprenticeship, five years, you know, worked like, so the fact you did a fast track, 
is, is quite liberating, really, to see so, how yeah. far you've come from. A... I, I think fast trackers. Uh, I think the opposite of fast trackers to, to most other people. I think they're the best people our industry have because they're people who have gone out their way to move into this trade. They've not fallen into it because their uncle was a plumber and they got put on a, a you know, a, a one day release thing. Um, uh, so, yeah, these are people who actively chose. So they're normally going to do a bit more research and really, you know, uh, learning to what they're doing. Uh, just my experience. And it's that's not every every case, obviously. Um, I, I yeah. agree with that. My, my two best apprentices have been a Dad. guy that was in the army for 24 years and he yeah. come out, did a fast track six month course. And yeah, he's yeah. absolutely brilliant. And my old man, he's yeah, a yeah, hat yeah. maker, retrained, you know. So yeah. I, I have a good affection with... Um, fast tracking but yeah i just really wanted to highlight well, that yeah so the, they're the not fast, like what people well the, people i'd say fast track. so the first track i did was for the nvq level two was it nvq or was it just level two i don't know i kind of get confused all the things but when once i got input then i got employment then i did get put on a day release so i was yeah. you know i did the, i finished it off by doing it so it's two two or three two years i did at the end to get up to the nvq level three because so i i and I, I didn't have the, I had the option to not go to MVQ level three because you don't need it. Which you need is gas safe, really, to put in a boiler. Yeah, I yeah. wanted it. I wanted to make sure. I felt there's a thing called imposter syndrome where you feel like you don't, um, you don't deserve where you are, or you know. And I wanted to make sure I'd got everything in place. So because I'd always had the idea as well. My, my dad was a, very much an entrepreneur, um, and uh, you know, I, I was always going to follow in his footsteps. And uh, yeah, I wanted to make sure everything was in place. Um, so, uh, and, th and that imposter syndrome thing, uh, which I think everyone probably has an element of, that's basically what got me started collating information to um, start Heat Geek. Uh, uh, it, that was the initial kind of me going out and just going crazy on the research. I've got ADHD. I diagnosed ADHD six years ago. Uh, and and when once I get my teeth into something, learning about it, you can't pull me away. I, I remember some days uh, Joe would come down in the morning, um, uh, go off to work and I'd start my research and she'd get back that night at six o'clock. I'd still be in my pajamas. I haven't eaten and I'm doing research on the same thing. You just get sucked in. Um, so, yeah. Uh, anyway, bit of a tangent there. Um, yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it's fantastic to hear because, you know, I've heard quite a few stories of people with ADHD that, once it's focused, once they they're, they're onto something, you know that it's it's the ADHD isn't there. The attention, do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it, it's it, called the, the term is called hyperfocus. So okay. um, so when you have ADHD, you struggle with focusing on one thing. Uh, it's it's dopamine regulation in the brain is actually what what triggers it. You, you your natural dopamine regulation is very very low level, and then once you get something you're interested in, bang, you get a massive spike, much more than anyone else. Not many people are going to get excited by plumbing and heating, but I got a load of <laughs> dopamine released, which sent me down that. But the thing, that I, you know, the actual reason that I was excited about it and the kind of what the message I want to put across here today is I knew that was a means to an end for me because the more information, the more I learned, the more I earned. It was what rose my value. Uh, if, if I can walk in and say to a customer, oh, did you know that you have, a, you know, this type of system and you, you've got this, this and this option? No one else has said that before. Yeah, that's because I'm higher value than the next guy. And that's why you're going to get a more expensive quote from me and probably still go with me. That was my kind of thinking. And that's yeah. what drove me to, to do that, all of that research so heavily is because I knew uh, that the more I could display a, a good, a high perceived value, the more I could charge and still get the job. Yeah. Yeah, and that and that that little phrase you coined there, you know, the more you 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 learn, the more you earn, is is so true, you know. And um, in our industry, especially, you know, in plumbing and heating, there's so mm. much, so you know, there's so much innovation and yeah. so much there yeah. that if yeah. you if you can grab that knowledge, you know, the the your your first hand experience with it, the the potential is is huge. And like yourself, you've you've become the UK number one hydrogen installer. You know, yeah, unbelievable it, achievement. It, 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 it's an open go out there because um, th there's not enough people in our trade. Um, uh, you know, there's a lot of low standard companies and installers out there, as well as obviously high standard, but. Because there's much more uh, work than there is installers, if you want to run a good reputable, reputable company, and this is in uh, renewables as well, uh, it, anyone can really set up a business in, in yeah. this, provided you put the effort in and you know you learn this the information that's necessary to do it properly.
See, I've definitely taken that philosophy, but I've taken it from a different angle. So yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I've gone down the business acumen and and yeah. personal. Growth. I saw the fork road when when you started up off the tools uh, um, thing. I, I could see our, our parallels, and we've just taken a, two different yeah. things. It was um, so I posted a lot at the beginning on that group when I have more time on my hands, and uh, yeah, it's a good, great group as well. Um, but yeah, no, you're totally right. There's more more than one way to skin a cat. Um, and it just goes to show there's just a lot of opportunity in this industry still. And even more so now that, you know, heat pumps are being pushed uh, and alternative heating uh, technologies are being pushed. So but the fundamentally it comes up, back you know. to education, though, doesn't it? Yep. You know, Always. education is the is the is the key to unlock the doors that are going to be in your way. Yeah. And, and the problem we've had in this industry is the lack of in, uh, education. We all know what you know, I've done MVQ level three, which is you know, as high as you'd want to go in uh, doing what we do. And, you know, that is old stuff they're teaching. That's not highbrow, clever stuff. Uh, and if you want to go and learn the higherbrow, more clever stuff, you have to resort to reading things like Sipsy journals. Now, Sipsy journals are written by academics in an academic language that no one wants to fucking read. It's not <laughs> written in a presentable way that a plumber's going to understand. And that was basically what Heat Geek kind of, want, you know, what's doing Heat Geek. I, I read it because I was sucked in. I knew there was something in there that I'd be able to find out that mean I could charge more. I wanted to be able to rewrite that when I started doing my, my articles and rewrite in a way that even a consumer could understand it, so in a palatable way. Uh, and it's just a big gap that was in the market. And, and that's kind of the aim of the whole thing, really, is to present things in a more um uh yeah palatable way that is digestible not a yeah. bloody big white paper that you've got to sift through a, bit, a bit more in it. layman's terms so so to speak do you know yeah so, yeah so and, and, and and video you know people want to sit down and chill and watch a video like i wear i wear a backwards cap and a stupid t-shirt on all my videos to make <laughs> it less fucking formal it just needs all bringing back down to earth it's these people on these high pedestals wanting to prove their worth you're talking about plumbing, mate. This is like normal stuff. You know, you don't need to be put yourself on that. But it's an ironic T-shirt for that. But, um, you know, <laughs> but yeah, the, get, getting back to, you know, and, and what I kind of want to put the message across here, the trades growth thing, the more you learn, the more you earn. And, and, and as you sort of go and progress and get your sales patter down, because sales patter is one on one, the same with the knowledge to do the system. The more you know about systems and how to put a system well and the opportunities available in a, in a home, the more you'll be able to sort of express that when you're going for the quote and, and build your value. And the next step on that is obviously increasing your prices, which everyone's scared of. No, I'm at the ceiling height for my area. No one could charge more in my area. I charge the exact correct amount. Fuck off, mate. No, you don't. <laughs> how much you can charge in your area changes by the hour. As uh, Especially, obviously, in winter, you could charge you know, potentially double. And it's not about charging the maximum you can get away with and ripping people off. Let's get that clear. It's about basic supply and demand. When supply is low, your demand goes up and you can charge more. And you should, if you're booking right the way through winter, how are you going to be free for your customers that need you, that you've been serving for years? What you need to do to dictate your diary isn't let your diary dictate your diary, let your prices dictate your diary. So if you're booking up, Raise your prices, free up your diary, then you're free for your valued customers. You don't be booking up and not getting back to your valued customers. And that was actually one of the first posts I did in, in your group was um, the ring strategy. I haven't got a name for it yet, but that'll be it for now. Um, so so we had our base price in our, in our business, which was, I don't know, probably started off really low. God knows what it was, 40, 50 quid an hour or something like that. And what we do is we draw a, a ring around uh, a map well, actually, we use Google Maps to, to see how far away customers were. And if they were above uh, sort of 10 mile radius, we'd bump them up £10 an hour, their, their rate. And if they were beyond a 15 to 20 mile radius, we'd bump them up another £10 an hour, their rate. And what that allowed us to do was, A, work in a smaller band, so there's less dead time travelling between jobs. This is mainly for repairs, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but you, this is relative to installs as well. So you're working locally, you know, especially if you've got to go back somewhere, if you've got something, you would earn more money out that day because you're not travelling around. And you should be trying to work as low as possible. If you did go outside there, great, you're earning more. But what you're also doing is beta testing higher rates. And when you realise... Why the hell is no one in that 10 mark, uh, outside that band turning away my work? Maybe I should be charging that much. So what you do is you slowly bring in your bands until your expensive band becomes your main band. And then you've got new rings set. And that this is a method we used over seven years. 
Uh, I'm not going to go into our charge rates right now, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we, 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 you know, I know exactly how much we can charge any time of the year because I've done this over and over and over. And that, that method, um, it enabled me to work. I was probably on the tools when I was with Joe, but three days a week and the other two days a week, I would either go massively into research which basically meant chatting on Facebook and, you know, scouring Wikipedia and stuff like that, that I would anyway, because of my ADHD brain. And then the other day I'd go to the cinema and just piss around and, you know, and then the weekend was a separate <laughs> weekend. I was only working three days a week. I was earning a lot of money for, because it was only me, it's a lightweight company, me and Joe. Um, uh, but yeah, getting those rates up and charging your worth, you're charging your actual worth there. Uh, uh, otherwise it wouldn't be paid. You must be worth it. So um, that ring yeah. strategy there, that, yeah. that is gold. Do you know, that, that is a golden little bit of strategy for anyone listening, you know, in any industry. Yeah. It gives you a structured yeah. way to, to test it out, basically. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, and, and get put the feelers out. Exactly. And keep, you know, importantly, keep your work local when you side your little band so you can dot yourself around your local area. You don't want to be driving an hour or two hours each way to, to you know, do a two hour job. That is not efficient. So um, that, yeah, that really got us off the um, off the block. And uh, now we've got we're about to take on our sixth engineer. Um, uh, it's not quite the same because you need kind of more work. Yeah. I'm not fussed if they're driving around as much. Uh, it's nice for them to have a break, probably. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I don't have to do it. I don't have to do the drive. We're not slave drivers. We're all about having, you know, a happy sort of uh, workforce, actually. In fact, we're going out for a meal um, uh, for lunch later on today, and then we'll have a few jars and that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, things do change as your business size start, as, you, as your business grows. But at the early stage, it's such an easy little technique to improve productivity, earn more immediately just by working more locally and experiment with higher charge rates. It should be done by everyone. And also, we're all doing each other a favour if we all kind of sing off the same hymn sheet with supply and demand, specifically between winter and summer. Yeah. And to be honest, this right now is like the perfect time for people to do this because the world around us right now with inflation and everything that's going on you know yeah. if you're still charging what you were charging six five eight years ago in essence yeah. you, you're losing money compared to what you was doing there so yeah, yeah. I, I would i would applaud everybody to look at this strategy and and mm. and try it in their business because i hear it all the time and, and like like you said a minute ago you know oh i can't charge anymore i can't well have you tried have you tried? Have you actually put it out there to the public to tell you what's going on? The, the, the fear is uh, these guys, I think they feel probably, and uh, we've all been through it, um, they probably feel very kind of appreciative of where they were. And if they lose that one customer, even if they put all of their prices back down the next day because they got scared off, they feel like they've lost that one customer. And that might have been the one that, you know, uh, uh, made them a load of money. But what you realise as you go on, you know, I'm in business year 14 now or something, uh, is it's a numbers game. You want lots and lots of custom. It's not, you don't, there's no one magic customer. Yeah. If you lose a couple of calls on one day, big whoop, you can lift your prices back down. But, you know, again, the ring uh, strategy allows for that. You can keep your base price if you want, but you'll soon see that, see that they'll pay anything really, yeah. uh, provided so I, you can I, display I the value. Use- I, well, yes, we'll, we'll get on to that next, actually, the, the, about yeah. the value, definitely. But I I didn't use the ring strategy that you've you've now coined. I, I yeah. basically called it, I, I used it a price throttle. So right. if the diary was looking busy, I, yeah. you know, I'd put the throttle down and the prices would go up. Right. If the diary was looking, I still do this now. Do you know, yeah. if the diary's not looking too great, do you know, yeah. I, I, I put the brakes yeah. on a little bit and yeah. pull that throttle down. And, and and yeah, and basically, like you said, supply and demand. Every so, other industry uses exactly. supply and demand. Well, you're, you're mainly installs, aren't you? And that's, I mean, we're all installs. We still do repair and stuff. But uh, And that's the same thing for servicing. But yeah, we do the same thing for installs. We've got oh, we've got a set price list. So anyone can quote any one time, at job for hat, very easy. And then we've got, so we make uh, like 20% on our base price. And then, uh, yeah, as we get busy, we, we give varying amounts of discount off. So they're always getting a discount. But yeah. we've got, you know, and we just vary our discount that we're offering at that one time. And in winter, we don't offer any discount. That's just the yeah. price they get, which they're used to getting anyway. So, uh, yeah, I, I think if you're not doing it, you, you're mad. Yeah, I, I, I would I would 100% agree. That's that's some great information there. Um, obviously, you touched on it's one thing raising your prices. Yeah, yeah. OK. But there has to be a, 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 a raise in standards, doesn't there, as well, and what you actually offer. And I suppose this sort of neatly ties us into, you know, Heat Geek, what 
and 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 how how Heat Geek and what Heat Geek can do for people across the UK. So do you want to do you want to dive into a little bit about Heat Geek and and how this yeah. aid this strategy? Yeah, totally. So um, so and like I say I, I very much uh, was research heavy because I wanted the best information for my customer when I walked in the door, especially for installs, uh, and and that's how I knew I was going to be able to charge this next rate up. I amassed. Uh, have you ever heard of Evernote? It's like a um, you know, it's the app. You keep all your notes on there. I've got um, uh, diagrams and all sorts of things on there. And I amassed all this information. I was like, this is, there's a hell of a lot, buddy, value here. Um, uh, I was doing bits with eco technicians at the time. It's very kind of almost similar to, to Heat Geek, but it didn't quite work out because it, uh, it was too much of a, it was a bit of a hippie idea, really. It was all pitching in for no profit. And then, you know, Heat Geek's kind of a bit more uh, profit led in that way, I suppose. But, um, uh, yeah, I'd amassed all this information and I, well, I had to give it out. I can't, I, hoarding that information is the reason the industry is where it is with lack of information. You know, it's people yeah. information hoarding. We need to be more generous, especially with standards and there not being enough installers out there. So um, the idea of Heat Geek was to, to tackle the myths of um, things that maybe um, manufacturers might be pushing that they shouldn't. So people could see through the, the bullshit um uh, uh, uh and also just give a credible credible resource written in a palatable way not you know the long words and all the rest of it so um a year and a half ago we got accepted um by bays for a subsidy um they they backed us to develop a course because we'd, we'd written an application we thought we were the right people to do it they agreed uh and that they backed us a fair a fair lump uh, which will get paid once once we've got three um, 300 trainees through, uh, which we're well on the way to now. Actually, we've got 450 signed up now. So we've developed this course that um, helps teach hydronics, um, uh, heat loss, um, uh, how they sort of marry together, different pipe layouts. It's kind of very difficult to sort of explain, really. I have got the uh, contents over there somewhere. I won't go into it. Uh, you can see it on the website. Uh, and 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 what 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 we've done with this is understanding this point about raising your value at the end of it you become heat geek certified so you're certified you understand that 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 information but importantly the course isn't an attendance course you don't go there and uh, oh I was, I was there for a day. it's actually all online uh, in, in fairness but you, you don't just go through the course and get a certificate at the end um it's a uh it's a much more proactive thing so you'll watch a video and you'll be asked questions which you can't just answer you have to go away and really work at these and you're forced to forced to process the information understand the information um uh, and a lot of people don't make it through but then do you know what that's done that's that's raised the value of our course if not everyone can pass it so it's again exactly. value driven and it raises the value of the people that have gone through. It raises the fact that, that the fact that they've persevered through something which is very difficult uh, is a testament to their character. Um, and I bet so, it instills it instills confidence in in the individual, which then will give them the confidence to be charging more. And, yeah, and, you yeah, know, yeah. For their, it's like a, a a cycle there, isn't there? With that, loads. Yeah, and the the messages we get at the end from the people that um they. they there, there was, it will be something along the lines of, I fucking hate you because that course was so difficult, but also thank you so much for putting me through it. It's, uh, it's, it's really rewarding, actually, really rewarding. And uh, yeah, off the back of that, we developed a Heat Geek map where people can go and find a Heat Geek in their area or customers can. Um, but you, you don't need to do our course. Don't need to do our course. Uh, and that's kind of why I'm here today. Uh, Kimbo Betty does a course. Um, there's a few more courses coming up. You just need to learn more to increase your value. And then when you increase your value, you'll see, oh, more people are responding to my boiler quotes with yes, maybe try bumping up 5% or so. Uh, and as you learn more and your confidence grows when you walk in front and talk in front of the customer, because that's half of it, it's, it's being confident in what you're saying. Um, uh, you, again, you'll see this response and you can play around with your, your numbers and your percentages. Uh, yeah, and it's, yeah, I guess it's that, again, another cyclical thing, isn't it? The back, the back and forth, the continued monitoring of what's being processed and what you can do to um, either put the brakes on your work and make money more money at the same time or vice versa. Yeah, yeah, do you know, and I, I'm going to hold my hands up right now, okay? And be, I'm going to be honest here. So I got access to the course when you first launched it and I just presumed, right? And this was a presumption. I just thought, 
it'll basically be an attendance course. Do you know? I'll sit there, watch some videos, tick some boxes. No chance. <laughs> Holy moly. I, 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 I got to the first page, I think, and I looked at it yeah. and I thought, okay, no, this act, this is an actual, like, yeah. educate, like, proper thing. And I, I just, at the yeah. time, I just knew I didn't have the time to... Yeah, yeah to actually do it. Yeah, so I, I yeah. didn't even waste my time or your yeah. time going any yeah, further yeah, yeah. at that point because it, yeah, it, it's going to need, you're going to have to put the work in, but as it, for anything in life, if it's worth having, you know, it, it's, it's not, it's going to be a challenge. There's going to have to strain absolutely. you for that yeah. growth to happen. Isn't there? I mean, you're, you're probably growing beyond needing that course now. And it really it's for, for either the guys designing systems, maybe renewable systems, or the guys actually on, you know, hands on the tools, putting them in and, and more geared towards commercial and heat pumps. If you're doing gas boiler swap, it's not really a lot to go wrong there. <laughs> so you can no, that, 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 no was, you can, that was one of the you, things you can that still, I've yeah. always neglected is that technical training because yeah, the you, standard boiler jobs are just, you know, they're, they're, there's not much was, technical. This, this is the problem with our industry. It's It was made, I say the problem with our industry, and it was also a solution to our industry. Combi boilers made our lives bloody easy because you could just put, throw them on the wall, plug them in and go away and it will work which is great. And, uh, you know, uh, you, you don't need to know loads of information to, to, to do that. If you've got high conversion rates, you're already winning anyway. Uh, but if you're struggling with conversion rates or you want to try and achieve more, you can go in there and bullshit raffles brains, as they say, you know, and come out with all the technical bits why you want low temperature boiler instead or improve your, increase your radiator sizes. Some customers love to hear that, especially ones in bigger houses. Uh, and then, you know, you can charge that next bit on top. Um, but if 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 and when we're going to move over to our alternative um, sort of technologies, that doesn't cut it. You have you have to actually start learning the theory. It's physics, actually. You've got to learn about physics, which um, I find um, most heating engineers take to like a duck to water. Uh, although they didn't do well at school, I did awfully at school. My highest grade was a D. I was very very challenged at school. Uh, I just couldn't keep focus, obviously, because of ADHD. I wish I was diagnosed back then. Um, but they, they they say that people with ADHD on that people with that sort of mindset they are geared towards being engineers. They can see how stuff works. They can figure it out in their head. But it's so in, in class in school I'd always struggle with science and I have my hand up all the time for answering question. Right now write it down in a thesis in a conclusion or whatever you know those things. And I get because I my handwriting my spelling I couldn't I was marked on English. That's not science and engineering. It's what we do. We're engineers. Uh, and we think with our brains, that's how we're in here. We're all in here. Um, uh, and yeah, I think um, the people in our trade are actually the right people uh, to be there, to be honest. We yeah. don't need to be a NASA uh, you know, employee to, to understand it. It's not that hard. It's made to seem more hard by things like the Sibsi journals, which overcomplicate things. And I suppose it's having the mindset of accepting that it's time to learn you know opening them port i call them portals in the brain you know like to yeah. to right be yeah. accepting right okay i need this i need to soak this in and and understand yeah. it that's that's one yeah i yeah you could the way i feel about it and i would hope other people want to is to get excited by oh my god i can earn that and i can be installing that stuff or you know learn that and i can be charging that doing that over there that should be the thing that pulls them forward rather than a Whoosh, you've got to change, young man, because you know you're up to. Uh, 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 people just need to get invigorated, and because the thing is, as well, once you start learning, you learn a bit. You're like, oh, okay, that's it's actually really interesting. It's fascinating. It really is. Uh, and once you start learning a bit more, you'll hopefully you'll get hooked into this thing. Maybe not as much as I was, because I had no life for a very long time. Uh, <laughs> and uh, well, not that I have one now, <laughs> but, um, uh, with three kids. Um, yeah, and, and hopefully you can get pulled in that. And, and one of the main things, actually, and part of the part of the course is, uh, and it's an it's it's a mandatory part of the course is peer to peer learning. What you guys do with business is peer to peer learning. It is proven scientifically the number one best way to learn, uh, whether it be about business or whether it's about um, uh, plumbing or heating or whatever. Uh, you 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 don't want to be sitting in front of a PowerPoint thing and just you know not really taking it in. The best way of learning is interaction with others on Facebook, telephone, WhatsApp, whatever, speaking to others. Um, so that's why when we 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 so we had a video where we talk about a load of stuff and then we give a question, which I've given all the clues for in the in the um, video. But when you look at the question, like how the hell do I answer that? So you're forced to go back over to our Facebook group where you do the interacting and, and talking uh, and. You, 
even by typing out the question, most people go, well, I did was going to ask this question, but by phrasing it and typing it out, I figured it out just because they, they talk through things. But when you ask that, you'll hear someone else, you can't, my opinion's not the only, or my way of describing things isn't the only way. Someone else will reply with a different kind of way of uh, understanding that sort of theory or whatever. And it's the same for business coaching, you know, all of this sort of stuff, which other people might understand a bit better. Uh, uh, and in un- when they type their explanation, they're understanding it deeper themselves because they're learning to simplify it in a way that can be understood, not only for the other person, but they'll be doing it in their own minds. So this peer-to-peer engagement thing works both ways all the time. And that it's just so important that people learn there's no such thing as a stupid question. You can come from any level and you should be accepted on groups like this. Uh, this is why I like your group. It's really understanding of yeah. um, uh where people are, people who are beginners are allowed to be beginners because we all started somewhere. None of this ego shit, you know, uh, and that's been historically an issue with social media, yeah, uh, which yeah. I think is dying out now, isn't it, really? Like people are starting yeah, to I, I think times have moved on and people yeah. understand that it, what, what yeah. the purposes of these, fe- these yeah. places are now and accepted yeah. them, haven't they? Well, I but think they've on that probably... peer-to-peer learning, yeah. you know, it, it's how I got started in what I do now. Yeah. It was literally, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would I would read something, learn it, and I'd be like, I need to share this. And, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and on the sharing of that and yes. the teaching of that, it then grounded it more into me, did you know? That um, is how Heat Geek was developed. I, like I said, I saw your trajectory and I saw a lot of parallels because yeah, what you yeah. were doing was what I was doing with the, the theory part. And by being involved in the conversation, I've literally built a business of it. You've literally built a business yeah. of it. Yeah. But I think people... Un- I think they underestimated the value of what we were doing. They, a lot of people saw us on Facebook and what we were doing. Yeah, you know, what they're doing, wasting their time doing that for. Yeah. You know, well, we're both laughing now. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but, but it goes to show the value of what you can amass. And this isn't a, you know, look at me and Wayne or anything like that. Anyone could be part of this. Just join into the conversation. It's so simple. Uh, and yep. and. Drop, drop any egos. You're anyone's allowed. To, I'm wrong about stuff all the time, and I'm happy when I am because it means I learn and I grow from it. I, I genuinely excited about being wrong, uh, uh, and it's just about that, really. You know, the communication and, and what it's also, you know, good for the industry. It's social. You know, you're yeah. getting to know people. I've met some amazing people uh, uh, through this kind of little journey we've been on. Um, and uh, yeah, I just the more people that that drop it and just get involved, the better. Yeah, I, I, I echo exactly everything you've just said there. Um, one question I've been burning to ask, do you know, is yeah. from your obviously, I, I, I'm putting you on this pedestal. Do you know, you're 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 a very educated man now, right? Okay, yeah, you've got yeah. lots of knowledge, lots of insights. You speak to lots of people. Where are we going? in the uk next with <laughs> regards to renewables and yeah. like what what's your gut it obviously yeah okay well first of all i'd like to say that the vast majority of people are far too tribalistic about this and angry uh, uh and and it people need to sort of step back and listen to themselves sometimes heat pumps are a solution they don't fit everywhere they can't physically fit everywhere they could fit everywhere if the government spent a re- ridiculous amount of money insulating the most poorly insulated homes and let's remember most of the uh, pop, you know most of the homes in the uk are edwardian and victorian by a long way so they're crap insulation yeah uh, and if you've got crap insulation heat pumps are difficult to make work on a normal person's budget because the sort of money you spend on a heat pump isn't average uh, household income thinks 29k I got 15k spare that's half a year's earning so wait so- when you reference heat pump you know for me which which I'm, I'm not ashamed to say i'm a little bit technically blinded here yeah that from my understanding you've got air source heat pump yeah ground source heat pump yeah and then are your hydrogen cells are they heat pumps or no is no they're different, different. so um okay, yeah sorry, uh, air source heat pump um it just takes uh the heat out of the air uh, so it's yep. a big fan, big radiator on the back, just sucks the heat out of the air when the fan comes on. Uh, and then the ground source, obviously just a loop that goes in the ground, gra- gathers some heat and then pumps it back in the house. And when they compress it, it increases in, te- in temperature. And then that's the temperature you rub for your radiators. The hydrogen fuel cell takes in natural gas. So this is where the hydrogen fuel cell is a bit um, on the cr- controversial side. Um, it, it takes in natural gas, um, uh, which is CH4, one carbon, four hydrogens, it strips off the carbon and blows it into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide, which people don't like. So it does produce carbon dioxide. 
But uh, I'll come back to that bit. With the, the leftover four hydrogens, they go for a fuel cell process, which is basically a load of plates like filters. And when you try and force these through these plates, you blow in air the other side. And because hydrogen is unstable, it wants to go and bond with the oxygen to make water. And it being pulled through this filter, it creates a differential, which generates DC current, which you send to an inverter to make AC current. And when it joins in with the, water, uh, with the air that's blown in the other side and generates water, that's exothermic, that's hot water. And that goes to a little store where it stores this hot water for your um, heating and, and hot water usage in the home. So it generates electricity for the home uh, and heat for the home. So wow. it's it's a very kind of, so that was, yeah, kind of glossed over quite a lot there and simplified, but it generates electricity and hot water for the home, whereas heat pumps are just, uh, just heat for the home. Yeah. Um, they don't produce electricity, obviously. Um, so, yeah, because because uh, uh hydrogen fuel cells um do release carbon dioxide they're not they're seen as like an interim technology they're not like a okay. final thing but in these victorian homes where the heat pumps have proven difficult they're a bloody good solution and, and one that's a lot better than a normal gas boiler um so yeah that's kind of one option that's another and the reality is we actually just need to look at each home for what it is and what they, if they can only get a gas boiler, that's what they have to have. Unless the government's going to, all of these things really are governmental and political issues, but the, the world or the whole country could have heat pumps if the government put a, I mean, an unimaginably high number of money behind it. Uh, but that that's how big the challenge is. So we have got a solution. And again, here's the other dichotomy. As we uh, in, in put in more heat pumps, the demand on the electric grid will go right up, which means electricity will have to be less clean because we'll have to turn on more coal generators and gas fired power generators. Having said that, we are putting in more um, uh, 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 wind power, uh, wind farms. So, you know, I wish I could just give you a one word answer, but that just shows how many variables yeah. there are in this whole thing. There's no answer. And anyone that says, yeah, there is an answer. You put PV on your roof, with um, solar PV generates electricity and a heat pump inside. Or, or you do this or that, you're just wrong because you you can never be correct for all scenarios. Yeah, there's yeah. there's there's a solution so what, to what every about problem. The, um, obviously, it's been big big in the news this year, really, hasn't it? About hydrogen being being a potential main source yeah. of, of gas, so to speak, I'm going through the system. Skeptical to say the least about that. Um, the amount of work because the problem with hydrogen is it's a very small particle, so um, it. it it leaks easy, much easier than natural gas. Oh, okay. uh, so, you know, any old iron mains and stuff, um, you know, they need to be swapped. Uh, I forget what they call uh, hydrogen, hydrogen embrittlement, I think they call it. Basically, when you run hydrogen through uh, an iron main, it makes the, the iron go brittle, so it'll end up shearing. Uh, yeah, so we need to replace all uh, all the iron mains with with um, a lot of them are plastic now, but not the bits that go into the house. Yeah. Um, so all of that need replacing. Then we've got to generate excess electricity renewable electricity which we don't generate excess renewable electricity in order to create the hydrogen so we're so is the 20, 20 and 100 they're... years off that yeah well my gut instinct that it's been all all basically fluff and talk you know yeah. and and there's yeah. not really been any substance behind it but just again this is on a personal level here i'm just curious so the hydrogen that they're proposing to to potentially use would that be extracted in the similar way to what you've just said, though? Yeah, so you no, get the carbon so dioxide offset. You've got different ways of producing hydrogen, blue, green. Uh, what's the other one? There's one more. Uh, I can't remember. Um, okay. But it's the green one that you want. The green one is from a renewable. So it's like wind power that um, uh, creates electrolysis in water because, you know, water is H2O. You separate the oxygen, and which is also a fuel, uh, and the hydrogen. Um uh, the blue one is turning um, gas into hydrogen, yeah. which then you're releasing carbon dioxide. Unless you capture okay. that, uh, it's not green. Uh, and you can capture it, but that takes yet more energy. Um, so, yeah, uh, the hydrogen, they're talking. that's one of the arguments. What hydrogen are you talking about? And the only one that's viable, really, from a you know the planet not dying kind of thing is the green one. And that is just literally like 100 years away or something. It's yeah, not okay. inside our lifetime, in my opinion. Getting- we're getting customers now, right? Yeah, that yeah, are yeah. Saying, "Oh, is this boiler going to be able to take hydrogen?" Right. And that I'm like, is, well, <laughs> that is a marketing ploy. It's so gas boiler uh, um, uh, companies can say it, it removes the guilt from installing a gas boiler. It's easier to sell the gas boiler. Don't worry, because it it can uh, take twenty percent hydrogen when we have that. 
Yeah, they, that point is going to be well replaced before hydrogen, twenty percent hydrogen in the national grid. It's just mental. Um, so, uh, although I think that we should aim for all these things, because let's face it, this is a fucking serious issue. The planet is literally dying. Species are going extinct. This, so it's not. It's so hard. Let's not do anything about it. No, actually, we do need to try and do hydrogen. We do need to try and put heat pumps in here. It's more that everyone's correct as well as being correct. We need to do as much whatever we can. You don't yeah. go. You got to go down swinging. You can't just yeah. say, "Oh, it's too hard. Let's not do anything about it." No, this is literally, you know, the the fate of the planet is at stake. I think you explained it well as well earlier. You said like, "There's not going to be a one fit." solution like gas was or gas is like gas boilers. yeah 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 it's gonna yeah. it's gonna take a multiple pronged attack so to speak to yeah. you know every every house every scenario is going to be totally different isn't it yeah yeah 100 this is the engineering mentality that we've got to have you go in you look at your options uh you look at budget uh, or you guess the budget, I suppose. Uh, I do. I don't ask what their budget is. Um, and, and you find the thing that fits in that scenario. And if all you can do uh, is is put in a new boiler, but they've also they need to swap a couple of radiators. If you can make those radiators slightly bigger, make that temperature that system run at a lower temperature, that system is one step closer for having a heat pump the next time, and it's going to save gas because the boiler will condense more. So um, you know th- these are all these are all things we talk about in, in Heat Geek, um, uh, uh, and it's just inevitable for everyone to know. This shouldn't even be a thing that engineers should know. This should be stuff customers are talking about because it's you know it's important for them to understand to ask for it uh, and to and to know about if we do want to make a wider change and yeah. save the planet. We are literally talking. It sounds over the top, but we are literally talking about saving the planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're, you know, with everything that all the change in in weather and and you know and temperatures yeah, yeah. and it's it's a very it, yeah. We it feels it feels like we're at this tipping point that you know if we don't act now, you know, we're going to start falling backwards and and God yeah, knows yeah. Where that will end and there's up. a lot of doomsday stuff going. You know, even the pandemic, energy prices are going over. It does feel like there's something brewing, doesn't it? <laughs> Well, I I don't watch the news, right? Just a personal I don't, choice. I don't. And funnily enough, my, we were watching. I think it's Martin Lewis, right? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Last night, and they were saying about energy prices, and I was like, "The hell's happened!" Like, yeah. loads of companies have gone bust. It was all yeah, news yeah. to me. I literally yeah. had no idea. Yeah, yeah. Looked at me, Bill. My bill's literally going to double on October yeah, the first, yeah, and it's yeah. like, yeah, wow, Do you know? Because then we hit, yeah. then we hit problems like socially, like fuel poverty. You know, how can, like, it was bad enough two, three years, like yeah. that, like two years ago. Yeah. What's it going to yeah. be like now? The prices yeah. have literally, like, exactly. doubled. This. The, the, the only one, so I, I've got a saying, um, which I, if you follow me on Twitter or anything like that, I always, it's no panacea. There's no panacea. There's no one solution. There is one solution, though, which does away with all of it, and that's just insulation. Because if we get insulation in, not only does it make the property heat pump ready for the future, it also lowers the, the primary energy needed. You know, people are going to be able to afford to heat their homes. You know, they're going to be able to heat up their tank once and then that will last the day. They won't need to keep topping it up, especially old deers, you know. Um, so uh, it, insulation is, it still is. And it, they say fabric first. It, that is a panacea. It's just something we all, unfortunately, we can't make any money off that. But, you know, that, that is what's needed. We've got partnership with the firm, actually. We pass all that sort of stuff to. Um, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, that, that would be one sort of take. I think, I think with insulation, I think it's it's like similar to boilers. You know, it's the last thing someone wants to go and spend a load of money on. Well, There's no yeah. glitz and glamour to say it. That, that, that's changed recently. I, I used to say this about boilers. You know, it's not like it's the car on the drive type thing. But heat pumps are on your drive and they are yeah. talked about especially grounds you know the rich customers they love um you know doing the right thing <laughs> yes we're doing like our bit for the to, to have a look at his ground source heat pump in his plant room that's got loads of copper and if he's got a plant that's got loads of copper you know you're selling that yeah. copper at the end of the day yeah. heat pumps if you want to make money if you want the you know if you want to make money rolls royce money on installations move into heat pumps because it's you know that is somewhere that a lot of people are willing to spend money for the right solution, provided you've got the information backing you up. Yeah, yeah, because like technically right now, right, if I, I, I just, I literally wouldn't have a clue. So it's, it's, I know it's that times thing. are changing. You so have my to, team are going to have to go through. You, exactly. You, you, you have to make the conscious effort to go, 
right, if we're going to make this move, let's go and make it properly and learn. You can't just go, well, that one didn't work. What could we do next time? No, you've actually got to sit down and go, right, let's understand the technology, what the variables are, how we can drive up COP, which is uh, how efficient it is, um, uh, and, and make a conscious effort, like you said earlier on, to go for it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's this. So, so just quickly for like anyone that is interested, the Heat Geek course is it available to everybody? Like, yeah, can, yeah, can anybody, absolutely. Or any, is there entry requirements? No, no, anyone can jump on it. What I would say is, if you are um, kind of early in your career, or maybe even you, you think you might be a bit slower or something like that learning, um, you might want to perhaps get a bit more experience in the industry first by you know working with people but apart from that um uh, you know it, it's open to everyone and uh, importantly as well although it's difficult it's specifically meant to be difficult uh, you know particularly the questions because we have a support group if if you come across stuff and you're like I, you, you just completely lost me you go in there and you will get flooded with you know support help phone calls uh, all that sort of thing. And actually, um, uh, as, a, as a gift to you guys, anyone watching this, uh, we're going to offer you guys 15% off the course. Anyone else who wants to sign up is watching this uh, and we'll, we'll issue like a, a gift voucher type thing for you guys. Oh, wow. That, that's fantastic. I would put a caveat on that. That's only available if you have donated to help for heroes and gained access to the bonus material. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But really appreciate that, Adam. Thank you. No problem. Um, I want to take this back a little bit. Obviously, we spoke quite a lot technically here about, you know, the technical aspects of the job. But yeah. you're obviously doing something right. Yeah, you've got yeah. Two, two successful businesses. You know, you're, you, you've, I think you mentioned you've got three children. So you, you've obviously got a busy personal life as well. Um, you're very upbeat you're motivated, you know, is this an area of life like motivation and mindset? Is it something that just comes natural to you or have you had to sort of build that resilience to, to pursue what you want to do and what you are doing, should I say? Um, I think ADHD helps because it gives me energy uh, um, towards work um, yeah. that, that I wouldn't otherwise has. And, and I, I would say, I've not ignored my family by any means, but I would say that I could, I'm ready to divert time back there now. Um, uh, 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 Self-growth and stuff like that, all the stuff you do. Um, if you see my bookshelf at home, I have 50 books on psychology, NLP, um, working on yourself, how to turn your, your machine and focus it in the right direction. Uh, I believe that you can literally become anyone you want to be by by reading this sort of stuff yeah. and hanging around and listening to the right sort of people who talk in a positive language with the correct focus. I think it makes a massive. I was into I've been into this stuff for a very long time, personal growth and development. And uh, I, I, I put part of our success um, uh, for, uh, um, due to that. And the other huge, massive um, thing I would say is a partnership. So um, business partnerships are something actually I'm, I'm kind of glad you brought up uh, or you brought this up. Um, when I joined in with a partnership, a, a lot of people have a stigmatism around partnerships and they say, oh, you know, it's half the money is going and all this, you know, and he didn't pull his weight there and all that sort of thing. I think if you go into business and you've never been into business before, uh, you, you, you're too afraid to go on your own. You go in, in a partnership. All as you see is half the money going to that guy's account thinking, oh, I did that bit and he didn't go and do that. When you've run two businesses for 10 years, like me and Patrick have, then you join together. All you see is half of the stress and worry going the other. I don't give a crap about the money uh, um, as long as I'm comfortable. Uh, so a partnership and then being able to bounce the ideas between two people and say, oh, did you think of this that way? Oh, perhaps we could offer this and do that. There is nothing. And it, it's peer to peer again, I suppose. Uh, that has really accelerated us um, uh a long, long way. Um, and, and before, I still, I still remember when you like announced that you and Patrick and, uh, were were, yeah. were going together, and yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I and it happens all the time. Whenever the word partnership is yeah, yeah, yeah. up, yeah. everyone comes in with the twenty years worth of you know, <laughs> I got ripped off, I got stuck up, yeah, you know, I'd never yeah. do it again, I'd never, yeah. and and like lots of people were like, yeah, I'll give it six months, give it a year, you know, and 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 I'll be back set for it, and so it's really it's really exciting to see two young you know ambitious entrepreneurs business owners actually make it work in a partnership um and i take my hat off to you on that and Thank it you. sort of led me yeah. down a route that 
So I've had an established business and mm. obviously I, I, a guy that I bought in, who's my brother-in-law, I didn't want to just give him half my business because, you know, there, there was, it. It, yeah. yeah. So, but what we've done is we've created a staged plan, you know, to bring him in. So mm. over the next few years, if he does, if we hit our targets and we move forward, because I'm Great. desperate for that partnership. Yeah, because, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I want the support, you know, that having yes. someone yes. else gives you. I want to yes. have that relief of knowing, like, he's away for a few days. So yeah. I take this, I take the stress for a bit. And then he knows when when I'm feeling the pressure. So he takes the the weight. A hundred percent. That's what it's about. And it's about not, um, yeah, if, if Patrick wants, I had yesterday off because uh, Dave Flores, my dad's funeral, like I said to you earlier on. And uh, I just I just went to the cinema. Uh, I just I, I just randomly had a day off, and I didn't yeah. have a worry in the world because the only person left in charge is someone who cares a lot about this company, not someone who's answering the phone. It allows a level of freedom that you will never be able to get otherwise. Um, yeah. I, I could walk out right now and just go to the pub for a day or two if I wanted to. I mean, I make up for it by working late, and so does he. We're both very much pulled into work naturally anyway. Yeah. So if one of us, you know, wants so there is that element of kind of trust built up in that respect, I suppose. Um, but yeah, and just the bouncing around of ideas uh, and uh, even I suppose when you've got an issue, it's still the same issue when there's two of you. But the fact that someone else is going through it with you is comforting in itself. Yeah. And I, I've always looked at earnings as money to stress ratio. If your stress is going up, then that value of money is worth less. You know, you need to be paid more. Uh, and as soon as I went in with Patrick, my stress was halved because I had someone else who understood what I was going through, what I wanted to do. And it makes you like we're here to live our life. You know, these, this is our work at the end of the day, although we might, you should enjoy it. Um, uh, you spend most of your, your, your life doing it. You should be enjoying it. And if you're not enjoying it, you need to change something. I, I, again, I keep referencing myself because you're hitting the nail on the head yeah, of yeah, my yeah. journey. You know, yeah, I fell yeah. out of love with the doing, you know, yeah. and that's led me to, and I was just adamant. I wasn't going to be that guy that in 30 years moans about the 30 years worth of work that he's done in an industry, you know, that, and cause I love the yeah. industry, you know, and I love mm. the challenge and the technical, like the mixture of, of the business and the yeah. technical and, and stuff but doing finding what you enjoy to do yeah fundamentally for me is like the most important thing i've got people that i work with that love the work yeah they love they're, yeah. they're engineers yeah. they want their hands yeah. dirty yeah. yeah but they don't want the stress of the business you yeah. know yeah. Yeah. and and but when you identify that sorry adam yeah ca- carry no on. yeah that's what i was going to say i was going to reiterate what you're saying when you find that bit you like as well that's how you become successful because then you get that natural dopamine spike that makes you go in and do more of that work and learn more about it and perfect it whether if it's the business side you'll go in and learn more about business and you'll try and because stru- that's what's releasing your dopamine in your own brain you've got to find the bit you love and stick at that everyone's built for different bits uh so yeah uh, i wholeheartedly concur yeah excellent um a thing we we sort of skirted over was the question i said about your mindset and and you gave oh, a brilliant yeah. answer about how you you know how you've sort of spent a lot of time and effort to to do that and and I think it's so important that people understand about them as a person, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, like you said a lot about psychology books and NLP and all of that. And that is something that I just find that the more I I read, the more I I learn, you know, the more I understand, not just myself, but other people, you know, you can understand why they react like they do or or why they do things that you to to me are are stupid, but you can, it just, yeah, not again, it just all comes back to knowledge, doesn't it? it, it, it absolutely. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's always education. Every single issue in our industry is down to education. We need to educate our uh, customers more and everything else. But um, yeah, everything we do in our industry is, or in our job is personal. It's a personal skill. It's from your, your a person's going to trust you with a few grand of their money to put something in their house that might not work. You know, it's all a very personal thing. It, it, learning about people and psychology and stuff like that is it. I had to do it. I, I'm so when I was diagnosed with ADHD, I was also told, told that I had a, a bit of autism. Essentially, uh, I didn't take any further than that because it's not negatively affected me. Um, uh, but it does mean that I struggle with reading emotions and stuff like that sometimes from people. So um, I I actually bought the books previous to knowing that, thinking I don't know how people work, and I just thought it's something I had to learn from a book. Some of it you do have to have feel for, uh, but the books help massively. And actually, the diagnosis of ADHD helped me massively because I can go. 
right, that's why I'm doing that. That's why I'm doing this. That's why that person acts like that when I'm doing X, Y, Z. And, you know, you learn how to move throughout your life a bit better, which always generates more opportunities uh, and you're a bit more aware of what's going on. I, I, yeah, what, when you're saying about success and things, that's one thing I'm quite uh, aware of. I definitely have an eye. I have a continuous eye, and I don't consciously do this, for opportunities. So every time I read a comment from someone or, or something, I always think, oh, what can we do in, you know, it's just something I naturally do. Yeah. Uh, uh, and it might just be something I've made up, but that's how I feel. Uh, I feel like I'm always looking for like a, to either help someone or how I can, something can be fixed. Um, yeah. Uh, again, yeah, the all, engineering all of kind of, you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But all of it, again, it does come from, you know, learning who you are and how the kind of work, you know, a way of understanding the world. And uh, those psychology books, they, they changed my life, actually, quite a lot, hugely. So an another question. It, yeah. It, it, there's going to be people watching this, right, that have never really heard of Heat Geek, never heard of, you know, hydronics and heat pumps and and psycho uh, psychology books and all of this sort of thing. So, and there'll be people that have as well. But yeah. if, if you was giving advice to someone now, you know, mm on what to do next, you know, as a, a business owner, as a, as a technical engineer, you know, where, what would you recommend? I like, I like these first few steps to the, because the first few steps are always the hardest, aren't they? Because then momentum kicks in. Um, and half of my job is, yeah. you know, as a business coach is just to usher that first few steps because yeah, once they yeah, take yeah, yeah. it, you know, it starts, the, the, the laws of physics start to yeah, kick yeah, in. Yeah, 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 yeah. The cart starts, you know, the, the, the cart starts pulling the horse type yeah. thing. Out. Yeah, because it starts snowballing, yeah. Uh, the first thing I would say is to define what you see as success and what your aims are. Because your, um, uh, your success for you, and this used to be success for me, my goal wasn't to employ it was to earn enough money to live a really cool, chilled, nice lifestyle. And that's what I did at the time until things changed. I had kids and stuff. Uh, once you've got that definition, um, if your aim is to grow a big business and employ people, the number one thing I would say, and I remember the day I sort of this clicked with me is I imagined myself, I said to myself, right, I'm not going to do that lifestyle thing anymore. I had a good time doing it. I learned a lot, blah, blah, blah. I watched a lot of films at cinema. I lived opposite the road to the cinema, so I was just in there all the time, pissing around on, on the phone or whatever else. I remember saying to myself, if, I've, if I'd made it here and I had 10, 10 engineers, what would I look back on and say to myself? And the resounding thing that just like jumped out was, borrow money and do it just get there quick because if you lost it all you imagine if you got to that position and you lost it all you'd be like well I want to be back up there again you wouldn't go I'll start off on my own and I'll go and do the old boiler service and I'll be like no I'll be writing to banks borrowing money and I'll be trying to jump forward to where I was because when you borrow let's say you're going to borrow 50 grand that's a lot of money at the moment to most people a hell of a lot of money but the minute you jump to running six stuff that's not even monthly turnover for us. It's yeah. nothing. So once you use that money wisely and get, get it to the place you need to be, the value of where that was is nothing compared to what you had to borrow. It only looks like a lot to you now looking from up from where you are. When you look back down from on the top, you would be like, thank God I borrowed, thank God I borrowed that tiny amount of money to set up this massive multi-million turnover business. You know, uh, yeah. So I, 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 it might be an unconventional answer, but it would be borrow if you want to go for that route. If your if your idea of success is to stay chilled and uh, you know have a lifestyle job where you can just I wanted to go away for like two or three weeks at a time five or six times a year at the time uh, and and the way you do that is the ring uh, strategy yeah. that I mentioned earlier on you charge as much as you possibly can because if you're doing that you have to charge good cash if you want the lifestyle if your aim is to not go on holiday and not you know have a very like work hard. Uh, and stay small then i just question why why bother <laughs> what's the point yeah it's it, like for for me on a on a personal level i'm at a stage in my life i've got four children all young you know building a mon a, a business with loads of staff isn't on my agenda right now yeah mm -hmm. it's a lifestyle business i want to mm -hmm. do nice. a little bit be able to pick the kids up you know and and that's what that was because I was able to define what success right now, my success will change, you know, as I, as life evolves, but yes, right now I am, I am super successful because mm. I get to 
take my kids to school. I get to pick them up most days. I get to do what I love to do. And yeah, I could earn more money, you know, I, I, I could, I could, but at the moment, the stress, you, you, again, you nailed it about the stress value to, to the monetary, you mm. know, I'm not willing to sacrifice that stress level yeah. for, for just a bigger pot of, of, of dough, so to speak at the end, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. defining yeah. that success, you know, yeah. is yeah. so, so and, important. And, 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 and also staying fluid. You, you, you should understand that you're, uh, your picture of success might change. My idea was for this laid back lifestyle and I was working three days a week, genuinely three days a week. It was lovely. Only until I was experiencing that. So I, yeah, until I kind of joined just before I joined with Patrick really. And when I had two more kids and I sort of looked back, at, I don't know, something just changed in me. And I remember taking on our first staff and thinking um, I'd, I'd had staff in the past, but not, not to the, in the same sort of respect uh, at the first and sort of second member of staff and thinking, well, this is going to be harder and it's, it's getting easier. And actually, as we've grown, I found growing and getting more stuff actually less stressful in, in many, many ways. And it's just the opposite of what I thought. I always thought in my head, uh, I want to stay um, a one man band, uh, you know, nice, chilled, laid, laid back lifestyle, which was nice. Um, but I don't know. I just think as you move forward and move through time, you change as a person, yeah. your lifestyle changes, you have more kids, less kids. So I, Keep fluid is what I'd say, um, uh, 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 and be aware that your what you define as success may change. Yeah, no, I, lo- I love that. Yeah, because if you went back ten years, my my definition of success was a million miles from what I'm doing right yeah. now and, and where I'm heading. So yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's some great advice about being fluid. Definitely, um, we're coming towards the end of of this this episode of the Trades Growth Summit. Um, I'm going to just plug to donate for help for heroes again. Um, you know, it's, it's such a great cause and Adam has donated his time, you know, to share his journey, share some absolute gems of wisdom. Is there, is there anything that, that we can both chat? You know, we could sit here probably for the next two hours chatting. So (laughs) is there anything that you wanted to say? Anything that I've missed that, you know, is is there anything specifically left or, or, or are we pretty Uh, much left? I think we're pretty much there. Um, no, yeah. I mean, the, the overall sort of um, uh, and, uh, thing I would say is uh, the more you learn, the more you earn. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll end it on that because that, that, that sums everything that we've just spoke about up, doesn't it? Um, so those that want to maybe learn a little bit more, what's, what's the website? Where can people follow you? Where can people see what you're so- doing and where you're going? Yeah, we've got YouTube channel, um, which actually we're about to focus a lot more on because we've been doing for the last uh, year, we've just been developing this course and building the course. uh, And we're going back to our YouTube channel, which is just Heat Geek. Um, There'll be tons of free stuff on there. That's always, that's going to be our main thing. We're going to teach free stuff through the YouTube channel and articles on the website, heatgeek.com. The the course just gives that same information in a bit more detail, but a lot more structured in a way that's spoon feeds you. So you can't miss anything and in the correct order. Um, so yeah, YouTube, uh, all the social medias, just Heat Geek. Um, uh, uh, and then the course is on courses.heatgeek.com, but you can get there through the normal heatgeek.com website either. Excellent. A- absolute pleasure, Adam. As oh, I, as thanks I for having me on. Be. I hope everyone listening has, um, has really enjoyed that because I certainly have. Um, and I think we'll just end that on. Don't forget, the more you learn, the more you earn. I really hope you enjoyed the show. Um, I just wanted to pull it out there for anyone listening that I offer business coaching, but also life coaching. My life is centered around something called the free Bs, which stands for body, business and balance. When you work with me as a coach, we tackle all three aspects of life. So you as an individual, body, mindset, health, fitness, knowledge, education. Business B obviously stands for your business, improving, maximizing opportunities, elevating, making more money. And balance stands for your friends, family, loved ones, you know, making time for everything in your life. And the free Bs is the core element to that. If you'd like to learn more, I would ask you to reach out to me on uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, wherever you might be consuming my information. 
Um, or you can email me directly at wayne at offthetools.co.uk. I'm here waiting to assist you to elevate across all aspects of life. Have a good one. No excuses. Let's go.